I love a good headphone comparison, and today we've got the all new Sony XM5s against Apple's existing second generation AirPods Pro. Welcome everybody, welcome to Apple Insider. It is Andrew here, and of course, we have some fans of AirPods Pros with us as always, but this time it's going to be a very tough comparison because Sony has just released their new XM5 True Wireless Earbuds, and these have some pretty incredible features that I am excited to share with you. So come join me. I'm gonna break this down into sections and categories. So things like the design, as well as audio and noise cancellation, which you can navigate using the chapter markers down below. There's lots to talk about, so let's get into it. Sony's new XM5s have shed some poundage. Compared to the XM4s, they are overall smaller, both in the charging case as well as the earbuds themselves. Directly comparing to AirPods Pro, they don't feel all that dissimilar. Like, carrying these around in my pocket, I didn't notice much of a difference. The XM5s protrude a little bit more, like they're a thicker case front to back. So, like, in your pocket, they make more of a noticeable bump. But, honestly, not a huge difference between these two. One kind of nice thing is the Sony's can still stand up on end, which is just... It's nice that the AirPods Pro just fall over and lay on their back, uh, but really not a huge difference between the two. To power up these cases, Apple, of course, is using lightning on the bottom, and on the back is where you can use wireless charging to charge this thing. But you have lots of options for Apple's AirPods Pro. You could place them on an Apple Watch charging puck. That will power them up. You can put them on a MagSafe charger. It'll magnetically cling to position and charge that way, or toss them on any Qi charger, and you can power them up that way as well. So you have like four different options for the AirPods Pro. The new XM5s offer two options. There's USB-C charging right there on the back, a USB-C to USB-A cables included in the box. Sony, what the heck? Why is this USB-C to USB-A? Give me Type-C to Type-C. No more of that USB-A stuff, okay? Promise? Okay, I don't want to see it on the XM6s. Um, but they also support Qi charging, so place on your favorite Qi charger. It'll power up that way as well. One thing to also note is while AirPods Pro 2 currently use Lightning, when Apple moves to USB-C this fall with the iPhone 15 lineup, it sounds like Apple is actually introducing a new AirPods Pro charging case, so you can actually buy a new case for AirPods Pro to switch those to USB-C as well. Uh, plus, you'd have a whole fresh battery on your case, which could give you, you know, more staying power over a long weekend and such. So that's a nice upgrade option if you do have the existing AirPods Pro or if you want to hold out because all AirPods Pro will ship with the USB-C case starting in September. Since we're talking charging, we can talk battery life. The new Sony XM5s are up to eight hours on a single charge. Pop these suckers in your ear, listen for eight hours without having to pull them out. You get an additional 16 hours in the charging case itself. It's a total of 24 hours of single charge. Apple, on the other hand, offers only six hours on a single charge, so if I put these in, I can listen for six hours before the battery is going to taper off, but you do have more charge in the case. So combined with the case, you're up to 30 hours for the AirPods Pro. So 30 hours total listening time on AirPods Pro, 24 hours on the XM5s, but single use is shorter on AirPods Pro compared to the XM5s. What is powering these earbuds? Apple is using its latest generation H2 chipset in each of the individual earbuds, and it also has a U1 chip for tracking inside of the case. So you have like the find my capabilities in the, in the case where you can use precision finding to get really close, plus there are speakers on the bottom of the case, which gives you that added benefit. You can actually play audio through the case and hear audio that way uh, to help you track it down. Inside of the Sony's, Sony is using its HD noise canceling processor QN2E accompanied by its integrated processor V2. So there are two chipsets kind of running the Sony XM5s and Apple's H2 is kind of an all-in-one chipset that it in-house designed to run the AirPods Pro 2. Thanks to those chipsets, they can do lots of fun things. So Sony's has multi-point connectivity, which is really handy. I can connect this to my iPhone and my Mac at the same time and move between whether I'm taking a call on my phone or I'm watching a video on my Mac. It's really easy to move between multiple devices. Apple's AirPods Pro 2 has that automatic device switching. So basically, as soon as you start to use an active device, it'll move with you to that new device. Sometimes it's a little shaky, but Apple promises it's gonna get a lot better with iOS 17. I'm currently on the iOS 17 beta and it is definitely better than what it has been in the past. What about comfort and control? Sony's XM5s I like a lot better than the XM4s, which were already a very compelling set of earbuds. I think the new ones are more comfortable, especially when worn for longer periods of time. I could listen for hours on end and I never felt any fatigue on my ears. 
And again, this is all going to be very dependent on people. It, it, my ears are not the same as your ears. So you can't always take my fit to be the same as your fit. Sony does offer four different sets of little silicone ear tips. There's like the extra small, smalls, medium, and larges included in the box. Apple does something similar. Apples are a little bit more oval shaped. I find both of these extremely comfortable to wear and I had no issues with them falling out of my ears. That said, I wouldn't recommend really either of these for super active sports or workouts. There are better sets of earbuds for that. I think even the Sony or the Bose QuietComfort 2 are gonna hold a little bit better because they have like those fit wings kind of that go up into your ears a little bit. Neither the AirPods Pro 2 or the XM5s have that kind of offering, but they do offer sweat resistance of XM4, so still good for working out. Uh, in general, a jog, anything like that should be just fine for these, but they're not dedicated fitness earbuds uh, like some of the Beats line or some of the other options that are out there. One of the biggest differences is that the microphones don't stick out nearly as much on the new XM5s as they did on the XM4s. Overall, I just, I do think they are a lot more comfortable. Controlling them is also better because you can control now all three things at once. You can control playback, sound mode, and volume on the XM5s, whereas the XM4s could only do two of the three. AirPods Pro, they're similar. They have four stems, so you can use them to play and pause, uh, switch sound modes that way. You can even choose independently per ear, and you can slide your finger up and down those four stems to control the volume. That's a new feature on the AirPods Pro 2 versus the original AirPods Pro. Sony also has a neat feature where you can nod your head to accept a call or shake your head to decline a call. So you can kind of just do things hand-free. You're working doing something, shake your head to answer, shake, uh, nod your head to answer, shake your head to cancel or decline. Super helpful. Apple doesn't have anything like that quite yet. One of Sony's most unique features is speak to chat. And it sounds almost a little redundant, but it, it does what it says that it does. Basically, it listens for you to start talking. And when you start to speak, it'll go ahead and pause your audio so that you can chat. See, right? It's pretty cool. So yeah, they just listen for your audio, pause it, and go back. I also think the microphones here are better than on the XM4s because they now have this new bone conduction technology where they literally use like the vibrations to enhance your voice and better know when you're speaking and to be able to use that to improve your voice while cutting down on background noise and wind noise especially is better on the XM5s than it is on the XM4s. Between the two, between XM5s and AirPods Pro 2, it's still a tough call. I think Sony has the win here. They each have like a three microphone array, but I think with new Sony stuff and the new bone conduction technology, I think the XM5s do a better job at microphone quality than the AirPods Pro do. Special features for the AirPods Pro, there is the Find My capabilities, which is really handy with the specific U1 chip and like directional finding and stuff, just like an AirTag. Very nice to have. Apple has also all these other things that we'll talk about, including like the adaptive EQ that'll balance the audio to your individual ears and a fit test to help make sure you have the correct earbuds in. They have the automatic device switching between everything, hands-free Siri mode. You can just say Apple's assistant name and it'll wake up and answer your questions and do all of that. Though Sony does have additional assistants built in, like there's um, Amazon's assistant built in, works with OK Google, all of that kind of stuff. So there is a lot of tech packed into both of these sets of earbuds. Now let's talk about audio quality. When moving from the XM4 to XM5, Sony improved the Dynamic Driver X, going from 6.4 millimeters to 8.4 millimeters. Allows it to put out a lot of audio, uh, more sound, but it doesn't have to move quite as much because it's a larger driver in general, which is partially why I was able to shrink the size of the XM5s. Apple's using a custom excursion driver inside the AirPods Pro 2, and it's the best that any AirPods have ever sounded. Putting them both head to head, it is a bit of a tough call. I'm really not sure which one I prefer between the two, but right now my gut feeling is telling me to lean more towards the Sony XM5s over the AirPods Pro 2, but not by a massive margin by any means. In fact, I think the XM5s had a little bit less bass than Apple does have on the AirPods Pro 2, so it's gonna be really genre specific. But you can also get in there and tune the XM5s to your liking. There are several advanced presets already created for EQs that you can choose from, or you can build your own. There are two customizable options that you can create and save that allow you to bounce it to your style of music and your preferences. And I think this is really powerful. You just have those options. So maybe you don't want to hear it necessarily exactly as it was intended, but you really want to have a little bit more thump, a little bit more in the mids. You can do that with the Sonys, whereas you can't with the Apple AirPods Pro 2. AirPods Pro 2 have, as I mentioned, the adaptive EQ that'll adjust them to your individual ears, but you have no control over how that EQ plays out. 
One thing Sony has though that's pretty cool that I didn't get too much of a chance to test is this DSEE advanced AI system that is able to upscale compressed audio to return uh, some of that audio quality that may have been lost in the compression process. So you can have lower quality audio tracks that Sony is basically upscaling in your ears to give you better resolution audio. It sounds really cool. It's all AI driven. I think it's amazing. Um, and I wish Apple maybe offered something like that, but I think it just wants you to stick with Apple Music and it's really high audio quality it already has anyway. But still, it's a unique feature that Sony is offering that we don't see much in the industry. Between just you and me though, I still think that the Bose QuietComfort 2 is smoking everyone. I think they still have the best audio quality and possibly the best A and C in the game right now. So if you're looking for like the best of the best, Maybe that's the better option, but hey, we're just comparing the XM5s and the AirPods Pro 2. Both sets of earbuds offer some degree of spatial audio. Apple boasts spatial audio, Dolby Atmos, all of that with head tracking on the AirPods Pro 2. You can be watching a video, watching a movie, and sound effects can be coming from above you, behind you, but if you turn your head, you're still going to have that fixed point in front of you where somebody is talking. It's a really neat effect. A lot of this also works with Apple Music as well. There's full spatial audio catalogs that you can peruse. The Sony's, on the other hand, have some degree of spatial audio, but there's kind of some asterisks that go along with it. So first, there is spatial audio for some games. Niantic's Ingress, for example, will support that 360 uh, reality audio that Sony offers. There's also that 3D audio available on Tidal and Deezer, but that's Android only, so you can't really enjoy it if you're over on iOS. So it just kind of depends on which audio source you're using, which platform you're using, and which earbuds that you're listening to, whether or not you're going to be able to experience spatial audio. Finally, we're going to wrap it up with active noise cancellation. Both offer ANC built in, and Apple is definitely stepping up its game this fall with iOS 17. I'll explain. So Sony has great ANC. It's fantastic. And they even have these location-based settings. So I can be um, maybe at home and have one setting for ANC. Maybe I have something else when I'm on a bus or on a plane, and then I can have one for at the office. Like I can split all of these up and have these custom uh, EQ modes or audio modes based around my location. They all work really well. AirPods Pro 2, on the other hand, have only three options at the moment. So there's just ANC on, transparency mode on, or just everything off. But starting this fall, Apple's adding a new fourth option called Adaptive Audio. Basically, it's a blend of transparency mode and ANC. So as you're talking to somebody, it's going to go ahead and like turn your ANC down and allow you to have that conversation, turn transparency mode up. But you get on a plane and it's super duper loud. It's going to boost the transparency mode or boost the ANC so it's blocking out more of that outside noise. It's going to learn these things and kind of adjust to your settings. So if you start adjusting the volume to a certain level at a certain location or a certain time, it's going to start to do that for you. So it's really cool how they're using like this machine learning and your environment to automatically tune your volume your EQ, your uh, ANC stuff, all based around where you are. So right now that's in beta testing. I've been trying it out. It's super cool and it's kind of like my preferred way to use AirPods Pro 2. But if you're looking right now, you've just got ANC on, off, or transparency. If we're looking at just the abilities of ANC, I think Sony has the edge here. Sony definitely is doing an amazing job. They're doing great with it. I think ANC is for sure better on the Sony XM5s, though Apple's got its own compelling solution. So that's it. That is Apple's AirPods Pro 2 and the Sony XM5s. Both great sets of earbuds that I like quite a bit. And it's a tough call on which one is the better choice. Sony is doing some amazing things and these might be the go-to set of earbuds just overall at the moment. I mean, you got 360 degree audio, you've got great battery life, industry leading ANC, you've got great audio quality. Just like everything about these has been boosted up. A new smaller form factor. I like it quite a bit, but Apple still has like that ecosystem factor with the AirPods Pro 2. The fact that they have just the one touch pairing on iOS and they can seamlessly move between all of your Apple devices, including Apple TV, is just incredibly cool. Plus the find my abilities can't be understated. I really like having the ability to find these. I had to do it before I jumped on this video today as I'm just searching around my house trying to find where I had set them down. So it's another nice thing to have over on the Apple side and I just like kind of being baked into that Apple ecosystem. But let me know what you guys think. Are you interested in the AirPods Pro 2 or Sony XM5s? There are links for both of them down below in the description. I'd love to know your thoughts here on YouTube or over on Twitter at Andrew underscore OSU or find me on threads at Andrew O'Hara 941 because all of my other handles were taken. Yeah. <laughs>
Otherwise, stay tuned. Got a lot more videos coming your way.